groups. All right, we start with the graph. We look for a pattern. So now is where we come to actually putting some numbers to this thing. We'll start with just basic numerical descriptors, then we'll move into modeling. That's actually what we call regression. All right, the numerical descriptor that we put on these relationships, right, we know how to look for it in a scatter plot, and we know how to describe it, right, but let's put a number on it. That number is called our correlation, or in general, our correlation coefficient. We denote that as R. Right, this, this specific measure here is called Pearson's correlation coefficient. Right, so here's how it's calculated. A lot going on there in the formula. Most of the time, we'll just leave that up to software. Right? We don't want to mess around with that formula too much. All right, so let's see how correlation works. So there's how it's calculated. So how does it work? All right, here's one scatter plot. Positive, linear, strong, very strong relationship. Right, if I were to do the math, this scatter plot has a correlation of about 0.9. Let's look at another one. Positive, linear, not as strong as the one to its left. This correlation, probably about 0.5. Let's look at another one. Let's compare. So we just compared these two. Right, now let's compare these two. All right, this one's positive linear, this one's negative linear, but I would say that these two have about the same strength. The R value for this one, negative 0.9. All right, so maybe you're catching on to a pattern here of how R works. Top right, negative, not as strong, negative 0.5. Something like this, no apparent pattern, that's R of zero. Something like this, non, there is a pattern, but it's not linear. All right, Pearson's correlation coefficient only works for linear data. We would give that an R of zero. Okay, so hopefully from this you can kind of tell how R works. All right, so R is always going to be a number between negative one and one. Positive one means a perfect positive correlation. Zero means nothing going on there, or no linear. And negative one means a perfect negative correlation. All right. So the further away that I get from zero with R, the stronger the correlation is, the further I get to those endpoints. Right, so R actually does not come along with any units, right? and outliers actually would affect it. Okay, so remember our, in our baseball example, we've got pitchers here. We said it was pretty strong, pretty linear. All right, turns out our correlation coefficient, that's pretty high. That's 0.8. All right, our correlation coefficient with runs in time of game, still positive, but not, not great, 0.37. All right, hits in time of game, almost 0.5. So where our correlation coefficient is really useful is, is judging scatter plots, right? We've, we've talked about how it's kind of hard, it's kind of tricky sometimes to judge these things visually. Now when I have something obvious, like pictures is obviously the best. Right, so it's that's pretty obvious. But what if I'm comparing these two? What's better? I would argue that it's not so obvious visually which one's better. But comparing numerically, now it's obvious that hits is a better predictor of game time. All right, one more numerical measure of relationship here. That's R squared. R squared is our coefficient of determination. And I simply calculate it by taking R and squaring it, R squared, easy enough. Okay, so what does R squared actually mean? Well, we could think about it as the, the proportion or often the percentage of the variability in Y that can be explained by X. All right, so like I mentioned, usually we express it as a percentage. So what that's telling us is that a larger value of R, therefore a larger value of R squared, is going to tell us how spread out things are. Right, and again, it tells us what percentage of Y can be explained by X. All right, so for our example, the calculation is really easy. Right, for our example, pictures, that 0.779 squared gives us 0.6, or about 
60%.